David Sanders comes to us from South Pleasantburg Nursery on Pleasantburg Drive. Mm -hmm. That was easy to remember. <laughs> and um, you've brought an assortment of things. What would, did you have in mind when you were walking through the nursery and choosing plants tonight, Davis? Well, what I was thinking about was um, uh, everybody decorates for Christmas. Most people put up wreaths or some type of greenery. And uh, a lot of people may not realize that they have all sorts of enhancements already growing in their yard, in their landscapes, or in the woods near the house uh -huh. that they can uh, they can embellish their, uh, their greenery with. Okay. With so if you don't want to go to the trouble of making a wreath from scratch, um, like Barbara Smith, that HGIC does, and Tony and I tried to do. Um, you could get a wreath, and but you could personalize it. Is that what you're saying? Kind of personalize it? Mm -hmm. well, that's mm -hmm. what I've done here tonight, and we can uh, take a look at those. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to start with this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, with this one. is what a beautiful that's boxwood wreath. English English boxwood. Oh. Um, they're they're very uh, very readily available this time of year. Um, and it lasts. It, it lasts a long well. time. Plus, we treat ours with an anti transplant to make them last longer. Oh my goodness. Um, but uh, but what I've done with this one is I just took some grapevine. Uh, a lot of people grow grapes and muscadines in the upstate sure in the low country. Yeah. Um, uh, there's wild muscadines everywhere. You can find a little bit of grape mine. And just so, so that's an example of what it right, would look this like. Is, this yeah. is what a muscadine yeah. would look like this time of year. Um, when you prune your muscadines, you can just save some of the prunings and oh, braid it idea. around the wreath uh -huh. itself. All right. So it was real easy to weave that through here. Mm -hmm. Not much trouble at I all. I didn't even weave it. I just wrapped it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um, you've got some lovely little pinkish Mm -hmm. um, that accents is, here. How did you do that? Those are those are cuttings off of a uh, Rose Creek abelia. It's uh -huh. one of the dwarf abelias. It's the heaviest blooming of the abelias. Um, and uh, after the white blooms have dropped, you're left with these beautiful little pink bracts that mm, that okay. uh, rest just behind the uh, the the flower itself. Um, and uh, since abelia is a plant that really likes to be pruned hard periodically, uh, that's another good way to uh, use some of your clippings. All right. Um, and the wonderful thing about this is, once it's cut, it may not last very long, but since there's so many of you them on the plant, you can just go more. cut some more yeah, and place yeah, it yeah. more. Exactly. And you've just been putting them in and pulling them out. Uh -huh. Easy as pie. Uh -huh. Okay, and then we've got a little conifer in here just to have some different texture, and it also gives a little bit of color variation. Yes, that's a, a golden fern spray cypress. Now that one, if you have it in your landscape, it better not be on your foundation because that's a plant it's going to get about, uh, you know, 20 to 30 feet tall. Now, and, where is that down in front uh, of us? It's right in the center in front okay. of us here. Uh -huh. And that's a very young one, so you right. need to read the label. Right. Make okay. sure And add 25% to the size that's on the label because okay. they always Now, understand. will that one grow down in the in the middle and uh, some that below? One, that one is... is uh, uh, classified as a zone 8-9 plant, Great. so it will okay. probably grow almost to the coast. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Okay. And then this is a beautiful one, and you said this is what is now the traditional Christmas tree? Yes. This is a Fraser fir wreath, and um, uh, here again, it's got that wonderful conifer smell. It does. Um, but it, um, it's, it's just a plain old Christmas wreath. Well, it is, and it's so. kind of just one color. Mm -hmm. You don't it doesn't pop, doesn't make your eye want to spend any time on it. Right, it's a beautiful but, but, color, but the texture is uh, is kind of homogenous. So uh, what I did with this one was I found a couple of things that are going to give us a little bit different color and a texture contrast. Uh, the color comes from the Goshiki Osmanthus here, which is the uh, same genus as the tea olive. This one is a, uh, a really pretty variegated form that uh, when it's actively growing, the new growth actually has a pinkish tint to it. Gracious. But uh, this time of year, it's got that really pretty creamy variegation. Is it small enough to use in a modern landscape? It's, it's an Excellent landscape plant, likes a little bit of shade, and it will top out in you know, seven or eight feet pretty oh, easily. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. not going to take it's over. It's a big haystack. And shape. then I believe this looks like a camellia. What that, a, uh, I would never have thought of that. That that is a camellia, um, and of course camellia leaves hold up really well when they're cut. Ooh, this they one, do. this one is my favorite camellia. It's called Althea flora. Uh, and the reason I like it so much, not just because of the huge double uh, formal double red blooms that it has, but you can see that beautiful cup texture and yes. all the uh, curves and and. Um, uh, ripples in the foliage here. It's voluptuous. And it's, yeah. it's not Curvaceous, just on the new yeah. growth. The entire plant Yeah. Uh, oh, it just has that. so much interest as compared to just that old straight leaf. Mm -hmm. Not that they aren't pretty anyway, but that one's far more interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I think this one... Okay, um, this one started was out... was kind of a mixed green wreath to start with. started out as a mixed wreath with the Fraser fir, a little bit of cypress here, and some boxwood. But still basically green. Mm -hmm. So The uh, same green. So I did a little bit of uh, little bit of customization with this one. I used some, uh, some red 
Nandina leaves. Now this is not your grandmother's Nandina. This is off of a Nandina called Obsession, uh, which is a true genetic dwarf Nandina. It's only going to get about three feet tall, very columnar growth habit. Uh, but the wonderful thing about this plant is it has this color in the new growth year round. Um, it does turn a little bit more red in the wintertime, but in the uh, during the growing season it'll well, that's be modeled with pinks yeah. and reds. Uh -huh. And uh, it's just a beautiful little plant. All right. Here again, snip a leaf off of it after it withers. Just go, go get cut another yeah, one because there's a lot of them on that yeah, plant. Yeah, Nandina is pretty, pretty full. And isn't this beautiful? And this looks like one of the anise. Mm -hmm. It's one of the Japanese anise. This one is called Banana Appeal. We've talked about that one, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly have. Uh, this one is a compact grower, but it's still going to get up, you know, five, five to six feet. But it's very dense. And Plenty of foliage to cut on. Lots of okay. foliage. Well, like that it. really makes the wreath pop. It does. I it really does. It's eye catching. Okay. Um, some of the other things that you can uh, enhance your uh, your your wreaths and embellish them with uh, some of the native plants such as uh, cultivars of the native magnolia, some little gem magnolia, uh -huh. uh, teddy bear magnolia, which has a beautiful rust-colored backing. Uh, both of these are going to top out by between 15 and 20 feet in the Which landscape. is small for a magnolia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Precisely. And then this, I think, is That's small for the species, but still, but much larger. <laughs> right. It's one of the intermediate ones. That one is Bracken's Brown Beauty. And, here and you again, can see where it gets that magnolia. beautiful name. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and uh, the brown backs are also extremely cold hardy. Um, so that's, a, that's right. an added plus okay. for those of us in the upstate. Um, and then on the very end down there, I have one of our native um, uh, sweet bay magnolias, Magnolia oh. virginiana. That particular cultivar is called Australis, which is a southern sweet bay magnolia. Um, and that one does tend to be a little bit more evergreen than the others. And it seems like the older that plant gets, the more of its winter foliage it retains. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the back of this. This is one of, one of my favorites because in the summertime, when the wind blows, it makes me feel cool, mm -hmm. even if it's not. And the fragrance of the flower mm -hmm. is perfectly delightful. Okay. And if you want to use a magnolia in your wreath, but uh, you're not necessarily uh, uh, real fond of the evergreen ones, we do have a, um, uh, some cuttings off of the Stellata Magnolia. This uh -huh. one is called Royal Star. Really pretty white flowers in the spring. Uh, but this one has the uh, the, the fuzzy, fuzzy buds wuzzy. on it already. Yeah. These grow very shrubby and twiggy, so there's plenty of cutting material for this without without harming the uh, the overall shape of the plant. The little stars, mm -hmm. magnolia, still mm -hmm. them. Thank you. Okay. Now this is I would be afraid to cut this because they're so <laughs> slow. But if you did, you would certainly have something dramatic to add right. to your wreath. And and here again, that's a uh, that is a contorted filbert, mm -hmm. uh, Carillus avellina. And um, it's um, it will get pretty large even uh, even in a uh, southern climate. It is more of a cool weather plant, but it should do fine at least all the way down to the midlands if it gets a little bit of shade in the afternoon. Okay. Um, and it grows very dense and vigorously. So uh, so after it's been established for a little while, you'll have plenty of um, of of ends to, to trim because it, it doesn't take much. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants a live tree, I think you've got a suggestion right down here. Uh-huh. That's the um, uh, Blue Point Juniper. It's one of the uh, one of the uh, Asiatic junipers. That one's going to top out about 8 to 10 feet with about a 6-foot spread at the base. So it grows in a natural Christmas tree shape. Uh, if you want a live Christmas tree in your yard and you want it to get pretty big, I've also got some of the uh, Western Arborvitae, the um, um, Green Giant, uh, the green giant okay. Arborvitae, which is we've already mentioned yeah. earlier in the show. Okay. 